After the week-long ceasefire between Israel and Gaza and more than 100 Jewish hostages were released, the pause suddenly came to an end, and the fighting is now back on full force. When Hamas violated the terms of the ceasefire last Friday, they only had about 20 women and children left to release. They suddenly, at the last minute, got cold feet and tried to offer to release men or even dead bodies instead question is, why would Hamas revert to their horrific terrorist ways and continue holding women and children inside Gaza, including a 10-month-old baby? The reason may be a lot more sinister than you think. The world is also uh, talking a lot more about what will happen the day after the war ends. The world wants the Palestinian Authority to rule over Gaza instead of Hamas. That, however, could be even worse in the last 15 years of Hamas's rule. I'm Luke, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of anti-Israel propaganda and Jew hatred, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. If you're watching here on YouTube or Rumble, Go ahead and hit subscribe, hit those notification bells so you don't miss out on any of our content. And if you're listening or watching on any of our social media platforms, make sure you give us a follow. If you're listening on podcast platforms, give us a rating on Apple Podcasts. That helps us out a bunch. Love to hear from you down in the comment section if you're a new subscriber. Um, Two quick things. If you want to get all of the rest of the Israel Guys content, including our videos, podcasts, articles, learn about our tree planting program, learn about our volunteer programs in Israel, you can sign up for our email list completely free, no charge, at theisraelguys.com. We'll put a link, a direct link down in the description below. Um, We're trying to hit 100,000 on our email list by the end of the year. Uh, We're currently about 85,000, so join those people in getting all of our content and uh, information directly from the land of Israel. Second thing is, the Israel Guys content is going to remain free, but if you are an avid supporter and you watch all the time, you're a subscriber, and you want to support our work financially, you can make a donation. Uh, It's tax deductible. We're 501c3 in the United States. Um, You can just also do that at theisraelguys.com. We'll put a direct link to the donate page down in the description below as we near the end of the year and uh, consider our plans for 2024. Your financial support helps a ton. Uh, Guys, according to Israel's foreign ministry, since October 7th, 11,500 rockets have been fired into Israel from the Gaza Strip. 9,357 people injured from Palestinian attacks on Israelis. As of last Friday, 137 hostages are still in captivity. Uh, of course, there it is it is a little bit unclear. Um, now Hamas is claiming that certain hostages are dead. Obviously, Israel does not know uh, how many are still alive or or actually in captivity that Hamas is holding. Um, there might be people still missing in action, but about 137, 117 males and about 20 women and children, including uh, a 10-month-old baby. Um, the question is, Hamas agreed to this ceasefire and they went an entire week releasing women and children every day. They come to day seven and suddenly there's only a small number of women and children left to release, including a baby. And suddenly they get cold feet and they say, well, we'll give you some men or how about we give you dead bodies in exchange for more uh, terrorists to be uh, released from Israeli prisons. And that is when the ceasefire came to an end. Also when Hamas started firing rockets again at Israel. Um, the question is why, like why in the world, what would be one reason in the world for this awful terrorist murdering organization to hang on to these last 20 women and children, especially a 10 month old baby, uh, us state department spokesman, Matthew Miller, he at a press briefing recently he said, quote, the fact that they continue to hold women hostages, the fact that they continue to hold children hostages, the fact that it seems one of the reasons they don't want to turn women over that they've been holding hostage, and the reason this pause fell apart is that they don't want those women to be able to talk about what happened to them during their time in custody. He went on to clarify that that last part is obviously his opinion, not a fact, but 
You tell me, like, what else makes sense? Maybe that Hamas doesn't know where some of these hostages are, or maybe actually they're dead, and Hamas doesn't want Israel to find out about that right now because they know the retribution would be too much for them. Um, Matthew Miller says, I won't say facts because I don't know for a fact, um, but he said, at the end of that pause, Hamas continued to hold women who should have been the next to be released, and they refused to release them. They broke the deal, came up with excuses why. Ultimately, I don't think any of those excuses were credible, and I shouldn't get into any of them here. Agreed. Finally, some common sense from the United States State Department. Um, but yes, why in the world? You tell me down in the comments. What is the reason why Hamas would continue to hold these 20 women and children? Are they dead? Are they missing in action? Did Hamas lose track of them? Are they dying? Are they sick? Have they been tortured? Uh, does Hamas not wanting the world to find out about their atrocities? As you guys know, they've been running a massive propaganda campaign since the beginning of the ceasefire trying to convince the world that they actually really cared about these hostages and then become really good friends and the hostages loved them and didn't want to leave them, et cetera, et cetera. All lies, murdering, murdering lies from a murderous terrorist organization. Introducing the Israel Bible Book of Psalms Pray Like David edition. Imagine this, a book of Psalms in Hebrew and English complete with a verse-by-verse -verse English transliteration. That's over 30,000 Hebrew words made accessible for you to read and say. You'll be able to read, pronounce, and understand every Hebrew word in the Psalms. But there's more. The English translation in the, in the new Pray Like David edition is an accurate representation of the original Hebrew text of Psalms. For a limited time, our friends at Israel365 are offering an exclusive discount to viewers of The Israel Guys. Just use the code The Israel Guys at checkout and get the Israel Bible Book of Psalms for only $24.99. That's almost 40% off the retail price. Dive into the Psalms, walk in the footsteps of King David, and pray with renewed passion and understanding. With the Israel Bible Book of Psalms, get ready to pray like never before. Just click the link down in the description below and make sure to use promo code THEISRAELGUYS for 40% off your purchase. So the infamous leader of Hamas, Yahwa Sinwar, who I believe lives in Qatar, but allegedly made a visit to the Gaza Strip um, during the last month, his first public statement, according to, I believe, the Ma'ariv Israeli newspaper, since the massacre of 1,200 people on October 7th, he said, quote, the leaders of the occupation, Israel, should know October, October 7th was just a rehearsal. We now know that uh, October 7th was not a standalone event. It was either they jumped the gun uh, it was either part, it could have been part of a bigger attack um, and, or, and, and basically the other facets just didn't come together. Maybe they did it too soon. Uh, we think Hezbollah from Lebanon was supposed to be part of it, probably Syria, probably uh, Palestinian Arab terrorists in, in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, probably Iran. Um, but he's saying this is just a dress rehearsal, meaning there's more to come. Well, I'm not sure how there's going to be more to come when you are eradicated as an organization and you as your you as uh, a, a leader of Hamas, you got some sights set on you right now. According to IDF spokesman Richard Hecht, quote, Yahweh Sinwar is the face of evil. He's the mastermind behind this, like Osama bin Laden was. He built his career on murdering Palestinians when he understood they were collaborator collaborators. That's how he became known as the Butcher of Khan Yunus. Khan Yunus is the big city in southern Gaza. Um, one could say that Sinwar was the master, one of the masterminds, if not the mastermind behind the October 7th massacre. He is the, the Hamas leader for the Gaza Strip, even though he lives as an uh, incredibly wealthy individual in Qatar. After he was actually served 22 years in Israeli prisons after he was um, sentenced, given five life sentences by an Israeli court, served 22 years in Israeli prison. And he was released in 2011 as part of the Galad Shalit exchange deal. Galad Shalit was an IDF soldier who was kidnapped, held in captivity in Gaza for, I think, about five years, um, and ultimately released in 2011 in exchange for over 1,000 Palestinian terrorists from Israeli prisons. Yahweh Sinwar was part of that deal. And we know in 2023, he was the mastermind behind 1,200 Israeli Jews being murdered. So now there's a, a lot of talk about what's going to happen to Gaza the day after the war. Israel, I'm, I'm actually, like a lot of people weren't sure how long Israel was gonna hold out, right? And their intentions to eradicate Hamas. But now we're going on two months 
And Israel is holding very firm. They will eradicate Hamas. They will stay strong. They're not bowing to international pressure. They are not going to leave any chance that the October 7th massacre is going to happen again inside Israel. Lots of rumors, lots of people saying, but what's gonna happen? Hamas is eradicated. Who's gonna govern Gaza? Obviously, the world is gonna do everything they can to keep Israel from taking over Gaza again on some level. Um, even uh, it's very possible Israel will have to maintain security control of the Gaza Strip as they do in Judea and Samaria amongst the Palestinian Authority areas. Uh, they don't do in all the areas, but they do have ultimate security um, authority and control. But a lot of rumors, a lot of people assuming, even politicians around the world saying, Israel should hand the Gaza Strip over to the Palestinian Authority controlled by Fatah. You have Fatah, Hamas. Those are the two big factions, right? Amongst the Arabs of Judea and Samaria and the Gaza Strip. You also have Palestinian Islamic Jihad, now there's small factions, but the two biggest one, Fatah, Hamas. Hamas ruled Gaza for the last 15 years. Uh, Fatah ruled Palestinian Authority in Judea and Samaria. So everybody's like, obviously the Palestinian Authority, there are, they also, Palestinian Authority is the PLO, same thing. Um, a lot of people say, well, obviously they're the moderate version of Hamas, so they should rule the Gaza Strip, right? Um, is that really a good idea? Palestinian Media Watch, who watches uh, Palestinian media in Arabic and translate it, translates and publishes it for the world to see, they published a report um, about Fatah Central Committee Secretary Jibril Rajoub, who said, quote, October 7th was part of a defensive war by the Palestinians. By the way, this is a Palestinian Authority leader, Fatah Central Committee Secretary. Quote, this will certainly lead to explosions and the next and more violent explosion will be in the West Bank. The explosion that took place on October 7th is a natural response to this Israeli terror occupation, according to them. Um, so he says there will be an explosion, a more violent explosion than October 7th inside the West Bank, meaning coming from the Palestinian Authority. He went on to say, quote, Hamas was, still is, and will remain part of the Palestinian political and national fabric and part of the struggle. We're aligned with Hamas. This battle, meaning October 7th and the war, will be opening an opening point for achieving Palestinian national unity. Our goal is the establishment of the independent Palestinian state that is fully sovereign over all the Palestinian territories. Sounds like a great government to rule the Gaza Strip, right? The civilian population that will be that after, after the war ends. Palestinian Authority. They're just calling for a more violent massacre than what happened on October 7th inside Judea and Samaria. They're also saying that they are perfectly aligned with Hamas. But yeah, let's let them take over the Gaza Strip. That'll be a great, uh, that, that'll, that'll work out just great. By the way, this is according to World Israel News article, 80 83% of Palestinians in the West Bank support Hamas. Did you hear that right? Hamas rules in Gaza. Hamas doesn't rule in Judea and Samaria. 83% of the Arabs here support Hamas. Arab World for Research and Development, re, their research firm in Ramallah, um, they polled Arabs in, in Gaza and the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, between October 31st and November 7th. 83% of Arabs in Judea and Samaria support Hamas's massacre on October 7th. Less than 7% of them opposed Hamas's attacks. Interestingly enough, only 63% only 63 of Gazans supported the attacks with 16% opposed. So you actually have more support for Hamas and their violent massacre and murder that happened on October 7th inside the Arabs of Judea and Samaria than you do in Gaza. Um, and when both groups, I believe, were asked who they wanted to govern them in the Gaza Strip, the majority said they wanted a unity government between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. I'm not sure if you're catching this, but the majority of civilians in Gaza and Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank, support Hamas and Fatah, both of them terrorist organizations, one of them who was successful in massacring Israeli civilians, the other who is also successful in massacring Israeli civilians, but typically they do it in ones, twos, threes, fours, or fives, um, but do it on a near, you know, weekly basis all year round but also calling for more horrific massacres than what happened on October 7th. Don't talk to me about innocent civilians when 83% of them support Hamas and the murders that happened on October 7th. This is the bottom line. Palestinian Authority is not a good alternative to Hamas at all, period. All terrorists and terrorist organizations must be eradicated from the land of Israel. 
Guys, as always, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe um, and hit that notification bell. Check out, make sure to check out the Israel Bible Book of Psalms, Pray Like David edition. Click that link down in the description below to get your own copy of uh, the Israel Bible Book of Psalms, Hebrew, English, and the transliteration. So even if you don't know Hebrew, you can still read uh, the Psalms in their original language. As always, tune out the fake news, tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We're here every single day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.